go. So, Captain, I mean, those Captain, thank you and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for the AMA. What awesome, yeah. To do Appreciate you having me. Welcome, pleasure. So, usually, what we do is a short introduction of yourself, the team, the project, and then we can go like more in detail and uh, people can ask questions in the thread recreated just for you. I don't know if you saw it. Um, um, the I'm gonna can you tag you. me in it? Yep. Awesome. There we go. Excellent. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So, well, number one, once again, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm Doge with Captain, um, the founder of Defenders of Dogeway, Dogewood, a hundred percent on-chain play to earn game that originally launched back in December. Um, so we launched in December as the first collection with 100% animated character rigs stored on chain, mm -hmm. um, which had never been done before, and built a RPG class structure to, to gamify the minting process. And I believe we were the first project to ever incorporate that as well um, from an on-chain mechanics, where you could have mint one of eight classes, um, which would either be a mage, a rogue, a warrior, a hunter, cleric, mage, or bard, or merchant. Um, depending on the class you had, each one of them has a different skill set when it comes to foraging and creating treat. Okay. Um, so... Go ahead. You no, know, I was just saying, okay, come for like, uh... Oh, cool. Yeah, so um, that's, that's where the project started um, back in December. The... We minted out near initially, and the first game was basically a minting game um, where to try and optimize your strategy to to mint as many doges as possible um, before the, the total 5,000 supply cap was up. Um, from there, we went ahead and we built a, uh, a polygon bridge mm -hmm. um, to allow you to bridge your defenders from layer 1 to layer 2. Um, to essentially play our more complex gameplays in the future with near zero gas fees. Um, we deployed that in, I think, mid to late January. Um, time's going by fast. Yeah, especially <laughs> And then, space. yeah, you lose track of it. Um, and then from there, uh, started our development on, on phase two, which was a, um, a questing combat system um, to where you send your, your doges out to fight. Um, it runs through a turn by turn auto battler, um, runs through different stats that are, that are tied into your defender. And then depending on your outcome, you post scores on the leaderboard, which people can compete on daily for free or spend treat to make multiple runs. Um, and cash prizes in ETH are paid out daily. Um, and, and right now we're continuing to expand on the ecosystem and, and create more robust gameplay experience. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, and we have our upcoming commoners collection, um, which is an, will be a utility class within the, the Dogewood ecosystem. And when is this next uh, like uh, collection will be released? So we're, we're targeting a release um, for the commoners in the next two weeks, which um, how they intertwine into the Dogewood ecosystem is um, they will be crafters. Um, they will have their own mini game with inside the core questing experience. And these crafters will um, generate resources um, for to provide power ups um, for, for the battle systems. And these will also be 100% on chain. Nice, very good. And um, I see, like, I mean, I saw on like uh, OpenSea at the. Uh... Like the 5k are like already minted and everything but you only have like 229 owners which is uh that makes how much like uh people holding uh, those nfts like the ratio yeah so there's, there's actually much more holders than that um okay. it's because of the the staking and the bridging mm. um so we have around 1100 unique owners um within within dogewood open c misrepresents that number because um, I believe 91 plus percent are, are staked either in on the ETH side or on our Polygon bridge. Um, so OpenSea registers that as, as two users. 
um, when in reality we have um, over a thousand unique holders. Okay, cool. And uh, maybe can you explain a little bit like uh, the concept, like with uh, the, the farming, the leveling, and also I think the rerolling system that you have uh, for uh, for the game. Sure. So in in the current state of the game, um, the the farming is basically how you collect treat, but just as a passive experience, a more active is questing. Um, and in the game itself, treat serves a variety of purposes. Um, number one, one of those is rerolling. Another one is leveling, and another one is additional questing. So if you have a, a single doge and you do not like it anymore, and you want to try and roll into a different breed, which has different stats, or a different class, which has different stats, um, you can do that at any time by spending treat. Um, the first re-roll of a doge costs eight treat. Second is 12, um, and continues to scale up um, respectively okay, 12 24 48 96 okay yep so it's um it's a scaling system um so the first one is um the cheapest mm -hmm. and from a treat perspective and, and goes up from there um the leveling system has a a similar scaling keep uh scaling mechanic as well um and leveling is extremely important because the leveling um relates to your stats um for the combat system so if you are have a level one doge, um, you're not going to do so well in the leaderboards um, competing against uh, levels one through five. Um, so the the strategy that most of our users have leveraged is uh, so our leaderboards are are tiered. So it basically gives everyone a a fair chance to play. So as someone with an individual wallet doesn't have to go against level twenty doges with people that have um 50 60 defenders in their wallet so mm -hmm. okay. most people they're playing the lower bracket would level their defender up to level five or would they level it up to the max level um that they want to compete in okay see and um like for the the reward thing uh is there a limit like let's say like for, for all the project maximum is like five thousand or like they can do it uh all the time. That's correct. Yeah, so 5,000 is the maximum amount of doges oh. that that will ever be in existence. So the original mint was 2,500 in December, um, and then the additional 2,500 were minted um, after the initial release. Okay, but my question was more about like the reward thing, like the reward breed. So you, you said it was like scale, but there's like, uh, is there like a limit number of reward possible for the whole project, or it's like infinite as long as you have like the three to do it? It's infinite. So okay. as long as you have the tree to do it, um, it gets very expensive quick. I believe at the higher levels, it's a couple hundred, mm -hmm. um, a couple hundred. So it it's some there's simply not enough treat in the ecosystem, I think, to do that. But if you ha if you were a whale and wanted to buy ten thousand treat, um, you, you could reroll as, as much as you want um, to, to do that. But there is no max cap. Okay. And um, what about like the combat aspect of the of the game, like with the training ground? Yeah, so we're in the we're in the first phase of gameplay right now, which is which is the training ground, which simulates a one v one combat system of a defender, um, which is what you own, versus a a training dummy that is either represented as a merchant uh, or one of the eight classes and and a breed combination. The um, it runs through a turn-based system, mm -hmm. which is basically a, a roll of the dice um, to then leverage your doge's stats probability to attack the enemy. And the enemy then rolls a dice as well um, to get its result and then attack the doge. And the, the battle combat is exchanged one by one until your doge dies um, or an enemy is defeated. And then depending on how much damage is given to the enemy um, is what ultimately determines your score on the leaderboard. Okay, see. And um, like you, you were talking, so leaderboards, um, so people from not like the, the same range of level, they play uh, like, like they compete to each other in the same bracket. And uh, what are like the, the price pool uh, like for, uh, you say it, it was done uh, daily, right? Yeah, so it's a, it's a daily prize. So on the, the lowest level leaderboard, um, 0.03 ETH is given out. 
then 0.05, then 0.06, and then 0.08 ETH daily for the top leaderboard. Um, and then in addition to that, there's Treat um, that, that's prized too, and that scales per leaderboard. And depending on, so every defender gets one free quest per day, and if they want to go on another one, they have to spend Treat to be able to do that. And that treat is, is partially burned, partially given back to the users in the prize pool. Um, and then part of it goes to the team wallet as well. And uh, how like this uh, ETH, is, this, is it like done automatically or each day like sound like the team just checked and uh, you distribute it to the, to the wallet? Or did you it, it's like distributed it? automatically. Okay. Um, so the smart contract for the leaderboards holds the, the ETH balance mm -hmm. and it calculates the winners and then it automatically distributes so from an, an admin standpoint we actually don't have to do anything other than make sure there's enough eth in the smart contract okay cool and um what i was about to say yeah for the for the traits and the commoners uh like uh what's the the balance between like the rare the special uh, one of ones uh Sure. So the um, the commoners will be able to do one of four jobs, okay. or sorry, one of three jobs at start. Or, sorry, I said that totally wrong. <laughs> There's three jobs for the commoners to do. Okay. Um, any commoner can do any job, but a commoner will have specific skill sets at specific jobs. So if I have a commoner that's really good at baking, I would most likely send them to do a baking task as opposed to a blacksmithing task. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by good at it is if a commoner is good at baking, they'll finish baking a certain percentage faster um, than a um, than someone than they would someone that's not good at it. And those are the skill sets tied into it. Um, you have your traditional rarities um, system with different traits um, tied to the commoner. The 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 clothing part of it um, has no um game benefit to it it's purely just an aesthetic aesthetic rarity okay. um and the one of ones will have an aesthetic obviously rarity plus an in-game um really forging forging machine um they'll be able to do anything faster than than anyone okay cool uh yeah so let's see now if uh Something I didn't ask, like uh, I have a Doge was like first edition for collection. Uh, like how many treats do I receive like per day? So it really depends on the class. Okay. Um, so your your baseline is around one treat per day. Um, and then depending on the class you have, you will either output or output more treat um, or, or lose, lose treat. Or sorry, not or less. So if you have a, a cleric is gets one treat per day no matter what, a forager gets one point three treat per day, and then it scales up 0.3 per day depending on the level of the forager. Mm -hmm. Um so that's your massive passive treat machine. Um you then have um your mage, which has a fifty percent chance of blowing up your treat um when you claim it. Um, or it has a 25% chance of increasing it by 25% um, with a magic spell. Um, you've got a warrior, or sorry, the hunter, who's consistently doing 1.2 treat per day. And there's really just a lot of a lot of variables in there, um, depending on the class. But your baseline's one per day. All right. Okay, I see. Uh, here I have, uh, had a question from David. David, uh, will 101 commoners be just minted, or will will they come as an in-game reward of some kind sure so so the commoners will be minted um as part of the 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 mint um that's going to happen before the end of april so whether you mint it with treat um or mint it with eth you have an equal chance of of getting the one of one all right okay and another question um how will the reward like regarding the the leaderboard and the the price, how will the rewards from team questing be split among participants? Sure, so the it will be divided evenly depending on the percentage of doges that were that are owned in it. So if I wanted to team up with Dad Jokes as my um, on a co-op questing experience and he had two doges and I had two doges, 50% uh, will be distributed to Dad, Dad Jokes and 50% will be distributed to myself. 
Okay. Dad jokes, I hope you're a good teammate. <laughs> Everyone, everybody yeah. wants to chill with that joke, yeah. Um, I think that, well, let me check out here, yeah, that was it for my uh, little questions of myself. I guess if you have any other questions regarding the game, the project, or maybe the team member, like, yeah, uh, how many people are, like, working right now on the project? Uh, the, the core team is four people. Mm -hmm. um, artists, developers, and, and game balance are the, are the, the, the roles of the team. So I'm a developer um, along with Brains. And then we have Puggins doing the art with the with another team member, and then someone that's consulting on the the game balance and the game economy. So we've we've approached the game economy pretty different than um, a lot of play to earn games in this space that are re really Ponzi nomics. Um, we, we're approaching the 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 core loops as traditional free to play games, as we believe play to earn is just another extension of a free to play. Mm -hmm. Um, and the game economy is need to mirror ones that have proven to be successful um, in in games that have worked and, and been here for the long haul. <laughs> Brag about the animations. Uh, so the the animations are something that we're really proud of, um, being being the first people to ever do that on chain. And we've we've spent a lot of time actually building more robust animations of of all of the combat systems that will be built into the the core web experience here soon. Um, so you'll be able to actually watch your defenders in these auto battle situations um, and the rolls of the dice happening mm -hmm. as opposed to just having a, a combat log um, showing a text-based combat log show the results. Oh, that's nice. So for those that want the more engaging experience, um, you get to see that there. Okay, cool. And um, what I was about to say... Yeah, for the so the the next collection is well, when is it coming? And uh, like, can you do like a quick recap on the the number of uh, mint and the the price? Sure. So um, the Commoners of Dozewood is a, a utility glass within our ecosystem. I know you guys I think got fifty or so whitelist for that. Um, the uh, they're hundred percent on chain. We mm -hmm. really wanted to squeeze the amount of detail possible um, out of an on chain asset with this. Um, we've got really good at optimizing um, everything that can be fit on chain by figuring out the animation rig. And this was the by removing animations and creating a profile picture, we really got to dive into to just what we think is the most detailed on chain PFP. Um, but in addition to that, you can leverage your commoner to, to craft items um, that will then be used by your defender in the game itself. Um, and those will be power-ups. They will be minted as NFTs. Mm -hmm. So your in-game items, if you don't want to use them, you can sell them on the OpenSea Marketplace. Okay, gotcha. And uh, what would you say, like, during the project? So you started in December, and uh, until now, what, like, was the, the biggest issue you faced, like, the... the one of the tasks that like was hard and you managed to deal with. Uh... Yeah. So the probably the biggest technical challenge um, that we we've had to solve is is dealing with the limitations of having everything on chain. Um, so I don't know if for who's listening. So you really you're limited to um, 24 kilobytes of block storage um, per per NFT asset, um, and that's just an Ethereum limit. But if you actually after you base 64 encode an asset, it increases in sizes. Um, so we had to fit our entire character animation rig with the detail um, under 13 kilobits for it to be a fit on chain, which is if any of you guys are into art um, and you try and be like, tell tell someone to make a an asset that's under 13 kilobits yeah. and make it move, um, they would they would don't be say that's that's probably impossible. But so that was the most technical challenging thing. <laughs> and what is like the one of the prior like hot tasks right now? I guess like the, the, the upcoming mints, but uh, maybe something else uh, challenging right now? Yeah. Um, so like day-to-day -day challenges probably comes down to combating, um, I think just NFT trader ADD in the community. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I mean, oftentimes that people are like, oh, why is your floor, floor dropping? Can the devs do something? All of that. <laughs> and I mean, we're working yeah. every day on it. And it's, um, if some person is, who's not paying attention to what we're doing, all they're doing is tracking from the outside, looking in, they're like, oh yeah, the floor dropped and they want to list their NFT under floor. Um, then it sometimes causes a little bit of internal community FUD, which to us is really no big deal. Um, but the, the fundamentals of the project have honestly, I don't think ever looked better. Um, d- despite the floor being a little bit lower mm-hmm. with current market conditions, we have a, like more treats being burned every day than's created. We're getting more unique users into the ecosystem than than ever before. Um, so it's really just trying to stay focused on on our vision and and I think time time will be in our favor. Um, it's just it's just executing. Okay, cool. But later in games move move slower because um, it does require a lot more development time than a yeah. traditional GFP. Because we're still discovering a lot of things and. Uh... Yeah, we're uh, experimenting a lot also, so. Yeah. Does anyone uh, in the agent has a question for Dogewood? Or want to come up on stage? Maybe I have one, um, I have one like uh, regarding the the polygon bridging. Is it like completely done, or you're still working on it for? Or... Oh, the polygon bridge is done. Okay. Um, we finished that in early January, so that was the round came out after like a month after we launched. Mm-hmm. Um, so any anyone can buy a Doge, bridge it to Polygon, and and play in a a near gasless experience. Um, all of our assets are on layer one, um, and then bridge bridge to layer two. That's sweet. Okay. So the the commoners on launch, you'll be able to bridge them immediately. Um, And we we actually leveraged um, the layer zero omni chain um, technology for the commoners mint too. So it's we're we're very nerd technical focused Mm -hmm. (laughs) at Dogewood. So we always try and like push the boundary and and do what the the best technical solution is for stuff. That's uh to know like nerds working all day and trying to make the their game better like better right nice mm-hmm. always trying yeah, we keep building i don't see any question in the thread uh like i think yeah i'm gonna do a last call for people if they want like Seems like the explanation were pretty clear and neat, I think, for everyone. That's why uh, I see Kenny's typing. And, uh, yeah. Uh, just going to wait a few moments. Uh, now I see the last call. Everyone's typing. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any chains for a whitelist spot for a male listener from Kenny? And the uh, polls are extremely clear. Sure. Um, if you guys, thanks for listening. If you guys hop into Dogewood uh, Discord, uh, I will recognize your username and just give you a a whitelist role. Oh, <laughs> appreciate if, you. If you want, I can uh, can take a screenshot and uh, send you all the name from the, all of the people. Who's there? Uh, awesome. Who's yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, anyone that's there, that... wallet. Let me take a screenshot of uh, everyone right now. Awesome. And do like when they join, do they ping you, open a ticket, uh, DM you? Yeah, just so if they open a ticket, um, I'll, someone on the team will monitor that and uh, we will hook it up. All right, then I'm sending you the, the screenshot of everyone who was there. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, I see no more question or they they is typing again. But uh, as a tradition, when we finish uh, the AMA, we have uh, that coming onto stage for a uh, for a dad joke. So here he comes. Hello, my son. <laughs> glad up, that man? you wanted. Glad that you picked me out of the audience to go on a journey with me. <laughs> of course, you had the most most readable name. It made it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> So I just um, want to tell you a joke. The other day I asked my dog, what is two minus two? And he said nothing. <laughs> I love it. 
And that's how we close <laughs> our uh, AMAs. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, getting more questions. Um, I don't know if I'm getting kicked out of this Discord or not, but I'm happy to answer it here um, or, or in our Discord. I will make sure that you get kicked out. No worries. <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> I'm looking out for you. <laughs> Now, it guys, yeah, as usual, the thread is open. You can ping those with Captain in there or easiest way, just join the Discord. I mean, you have to join the Discord if you want those. The, the whitelist uh, gave us for the audience, so let's go. And uh, yeah, those with Captain, thank you for joining us and uh, presenting the project. And uh, we'll talk uh, later. Awesome. All right, see you guys. See ya. Take care, my son.